This is another in a series of instructional videos on installations. I wanted to go through the process from start to finish. So I have, I have done a little bit of preparation, right? I have taken this off of my panel, so I have access to my panel. So that took a little bit of time and I've, I've opened, well, I just barely opened this box. So again, my panel is well labeled. I know where each of my circuits is. Um, I have plenty of room inside my box for putting all of my gear in here. And I have tested the Wi-Fi. I have decent Wi-Fi that will reach to this location. I have in the box, this is my computer. So that's the sending and receiving unit. This is the box of accessories. So this will be the two CT clamps that go around my power coming into the box, my supply powers, uh, as well as my antenna for the, so it'll have the antenna for the sending unit. Um, it'll have the connections that, to allow me to hook power up to the sending unit. And then I should have two boxes of eight. So this has eight CTs and this has eight CTs. Whoever set these up did something very strange. There are 14, because it doesn't go 11 to 26, which would be 16. They skipped 13, okay, I can understand that. That's an old tradition. But they also skipped 20, and it took me a minute to figure that out. And there are, yeah, there are, there are 14. And I have 16 CT, so I should, I should be good. Should be able to, to measure each of them. These are each a single, these are all 50 amp circuits, but each one is a single wire. So each one is a single uh, phase. 50 amp supply going out. So I am going to, I'll open up my accessories box first. Like I said, I think the antenna is in here. This is the cord for connecting power to supplying power to this. So this will plug into here and these wires will plug. Two of them will be plugged into my my uh, neutral or ground bar, and two of them will be plugged into supplied breakers. It needs to be powered from two opposing, two different phases, right? So if I'm going here, I'd have to go up and down, because this is on one phase, this is on another phase. So I need to power it from two of those. So got my power, got my big CTs, got my antenna, got my box, and my, my small CTs. I'm gonna start by hooking up my two big CTs. So they're gonna go on these two. There is instructions on here telling me which direction. Do I mount it like this or do I mount it like this? So this is saying the breaker and the load is that way. So it'll go, it'll definitely go like this rather than like this. Make sure the arrow is pointing at the breaker, at the load. The load is downstream. So I'm going to do these two. So I've got those in and connected. I have turned the power off here. This is a, a, a site where the pads are not occupied. So I was able to turn the power off, which, I mean, just provides a little extra protection as I'm working in this box. Of course, it doesn't have, you know, I'm not touching any wires or any places that uh, are potentially dangerous, but it is nicer to have it turned off. Next, I'm going to install the first eight of these. And again, I'm just going down from the top to the bottom. This is a very clean box. I think you're going to see boxes that are much less organized than this, but I'm going to start putting these in one at a time and I will be labeling them as well. And put a piece of tape and a label on each one right now so that they're a little bit easier to manage once I go to plug them into the computer. So I have all 15 CTs attached. Uh, they are not labeled, so I'm going to go through and put a piece of tape and a label on each one right now so that they're a little bit easier to manage once I go to plug them into the computer. This is the first one. This is site 11, so I now know where to connect this in the computer. They are all now labeled, so now I'm going to go through because it's a bit of a jumble, so I'm going to take all of these, organize them, squeeze them together, get them out of the way, get them taped up, and uh, get them ready to plug into the computer. So I've started taping these. Again, because they come in, you know, this, this one starts here and these lower ones start much lower. I'm taping them as they come together. So as, as additional cords come in, I tape those. As additional cords come in, I tape those. So I'm trying to get them, again, just concise and out of the way 
so that uh, yeah, the box stays clean, you can access and take care of things in here as needed. But just, just showing you how I'm doing that. So you can see these come in and get taped. Those come in and get taped. These come in and get taped. Okay, I taped until I'm coming to my first chords. So again, in my box, the first number is 11 and the last number is 26. So this goes one through 16. This will, this number one will be 11, 12, 14, 15, and so on. So again, I've taped until I've come to my first ones. I'll start plugging them in. And as I have leftover, you know, as these start to get longer, the strands start to get longer, I will tape those as well. Okay, so I've got them all plugged in, 11 up to 26. Like I said, now I'm gonna go back through and clean this up so that it's not so jumbled. Okay, I've got this much cleaner now. So I need to plug in my two big CTs in the top. Those will go in A and B. Then I will plug the holes that are remaining. So I'll have C, I'll have one hole on top, and I'll have these two holes, 15 and 16, that are not being used. So this is in the accessories bag. There's these little plugs. They are two different sizes. The, the smaller holes, this is a smaller size than the bigger holes. This is a standard, I think, a 3.5 connection, and these are a 2.5 connection. Okay, now I need to power my unit. So I have four wires here. I have a red, white, blue, and black. The white and blue I will take to my neutral bar ground bar and the red and black will go to, I'm actually going to put it to these top two circuits right there. So I have my red and black connected here. I have my blue and white connected here. I've tried to clean them up a little bit and they are plugged in to my machine. All right, now I need to hook up my antenna. This is connecting right here. And I need to put this through a hole. So I need to pop one of these holes out. Okay, I pop that hole out. I will feed this up so that's snug, snapped in there. And I can screw this into this right here. Okay, everything is plugged in. My antenna is plugged in, all my CTs are plugged in, my power is plugged in. Now I'm worried about these popping out. I don't want to, you know, this, I want to be as maintenance free as possible. So I don't want to have these little plugs unsnapping so we don't really have a very elegant solution at this point in time but we will be coming up with something better um, but I'm just gonna tape these in so I'll tape them in and then show you how that looks again not the most elegant solution but these are now all taped and have some pressure on them so they should not be coming loose so now I'm just finding space for my box in inside the panel here Clear on this. I don't want any obstructions with my lid going back on, so I've got all my CTs come, my little CTs coming here down into the machine, big CTs coming down here into the, into the machine, the box. Got my power coming into the box, so everything is connected and ready to go. I will turn this on and get out my phone and start the process of programming these. So I'm going to come into my Emporia app, and I'm going to tell it that I would like to manage devices. I'd like to add a device. It's telling me the live chat's unavailable. I'm, this is what I'm using, the Emporia View 2. That's what I'm adding. Um, I can go directly to setup. I don't need instructions on how to set it up. I've already got it set up saying, hey, we're gonna turn on your Bluetooth, stand close to the box. Okay, my Bluetooth is being turned on. I'm standing close to the box and it's gonna to try to find it for me. So now it's appearing. You see this, the FB34A4. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna connect. Scanning available Wi-Fi networks. So it's found my network. I'm gonna put in my password for that network. I'm hooked up to my network. I'm gonna tell it no, no solar generation. It's gonna go through some lack of load. That's okay. 
I'm, I, there's, there's no load because nothing's connected. So in this case, I have a, this box is called, so I know the name of this circuit. The, the owner is, has given me, has mapped out what they want each box to be called. So this is called South 50, sites, sites 11 through 26. I'm on Central Time, I'm saving that. It's updating the firmware. Once this firmware is updated, I'll start again. Okay, it is now, see this FB34A4, that is the new one that's installed. I have named it, but that's not showing up yet. So I'm gonna come here and manage my devices. The South 50 amps. And I'm gonna go through and name these. So circuit one in my case is 11. So this is critical, right? This is, these two pieces of the installation are critical. I need to make sure that my box or my, my Emporia computer, in this case, my South 50 amp sites 11 through 26, that those are labeled correctly and that the circuits are labeled correctly. That they correspond to the right RV pads. Otherwise, your bills are not gonna get sent to the right customers. You're not measuring the right electricity. So make sure that this is, again, critical, that, I, that I've labeled that my circuits are going, that they're plugged into the right spot here and that they're, and that the name is correct here. So I'm gonna go through and name this, again, circuit one will be 11, 12, 14 and on. Okay, so I've named my first circuit, site, south 50, site 11. I'm gonna do this in the second circuit. I just wanted to make note that in here, you have to give it a circuit type. You have to designate a circuit type when we're doing the electrical vehicle, electric vehicle RV. Okay, as you can see, I've gone through here and I've named them South 50, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Again, they skipped 13 and 20 for whatever reason. So this is all now saved. So I'm going to exit back out of here. Just hit the back arrow. I'm gonna come home, actually hit the home arrow down here. And now I should be able to see so I've got my South 50, it's not reading anything, but I'm gonna pull it up and see, okay, again, I'll see 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I need to verify all of those are showing up. If one of those is not showing up, it means something's not working. The plug isn't connected. Um, but yeah, those, those are critically important. Again, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure everything is showing up because before I leave, I need to know they're all working. They're all sending data back and forth. Everything is being measured because if something's unplugged or something's wrong, I need to troubleshoot that now. I don't want to have to come back to do that. I want to make sure everything is showing up before I leave. Okay, so I am now done. Everything's back in. The cover is on. My breakers are on. These are now being measured. Again, there's nothing to measure because they're empty, but they are ready to be measured. The data is being sent. The data is being collected, everything, I know that all my plugs are working. I think that that time should be under an hour, typically. Uh, that should give you enough time. On a, a standard box like this, I have 15 wires that I'm measuring. Um, there was space in there. I think under an hour is reasonable, especially having done a few in the past.